and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today I am making a lemony soap using this fragrance from Nature's Garden. It's called Lemon Squares. Wow, this smells really, really, really good. <laughs> I love lemon. I'm a citrus fan anyway. Um, and the reviews on this said that it doesn't cause acceleration, separation, or rising, and that it discolors to a light tan. So I have not soaked with this before, but we're going to go on the reviews. Smells fantastic. I'm excited to do this. And let's talk about the colors that I'm going to use today in this goat milk soap. Milk and oil method, goat milk is what we're doing. For the colors, I'm going to do goldenrod from Bee Scented. I love this yellow. It's one of my all-time favorite yellow colors. And from Rustic Essentials, Lemon Sherbet. Do you say Sherbert or Sherbet? 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 Well, anyway, there it is. You can't, it, this um, container is a little frosty, but it's a very light lemony yellow. So these two are going to swirl together in the body of this soap. And I'll probably do a little titanium dioxide in the unmica portion just to keep things on the brighter side because I really want those lemony yellow swirls to pop out. And again, it's going to be a goat milk soap. And that's about it. Just, oh, this smells good. <laughs> so let me get everything pulled together, get my goat milk out and get my lye solution prepped. All the prep work that goes into making soap and we will come back and make some lemony, hmm, I think I'm gonna call this soap Lemon Drop. That's the name I'm thinking in my head. So come back and make some Lemon Drop goat milk soap. All right, we are back to get our additives into this Lemon Drop. Oh my word, lemony goodness. <laughs> I have the fragrance in here and that's what's got me going. It smells so good. So to this, we're gonna do milk and oil method and this is goat's milk that I've water discounted from my lye solution for, or milk discounted if you will. Put that straight in the oils along with my dry additives, which is my colloidal oats and my kaolin clay like I normally do. Nice heaping couple of tablespoons in here. Um, I get asked a lot about additives and how to add them. I like to add at a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils. You can go all the way up to one tablespoon per pound of oils if you'd like. But I do about one teaspoon per pound of oils and a, a little bit shy of that because I add two of them in there. That's a rule of thumb. I don't think there's a really hard and fast rule to the dry ingredients. Um, you don't want to overdo it, but as long as you're within the range of one teaspoon to one tablespoon per pound of oils or a little under that, you're going to be fine. So let me get this all blended up and we will come back when it's time to make soap. back with our lye solution which has cane sugar, tussa silk fibers, and sodium lactate in there. The cane sugar is a lather booster. It makes for a really abundant fluffy lather in soap. The silk just feels great and silky in the bar of soap. It adds an extra sheen to the lather which I love and the sodium lactate helps firm the bar up quicker for a faster unmolding. That's why I put those in there and all of those are optional additives. You don't need to add those at all. You can just have sodium hydroxide and distilled water. You're good to go. I like all the extras. You know, I'm an extra kind of girl. I love the additives. So that's what's going on in the live pot. And I wanted to show you, I have a little bit of this very shimmery, um, sparkly white mica that I'm going to sprinkle down, I think, on top a little bit just to kind of represent like a powdered sugar topping on this lemon drop. It smells so good in here. <laughs> I am a big lemon fan anyway, so this really has me happy. So let's go ahead and add our lye solution in here. I have my colors off to the side, all ready to go. We're going to get up to a nice light trace, split off for the colors, and we'll do a hanger swirl in the body. Now you're going to watch this go from an ivory color to a darker beige and that is the lye solution reacting with the goat milk and the natural sugars in there and it's totally fine. This fragrance does have vanillin again so it's going to discolor to a light beige. I'll probably add a touch of TD in the unmiced portion just to let those lemon, you know, colors really pop.
the next day. It's been about 24 hours and that color morph on that yellow was pretty intense. It was hysterical. Anyway, the top looks really good and sweet, but it's a little bit dull and I have not steamed my soaps in front of you all for a while, so I figured I'd bring you along while I steam the soap. I have, this is just a clothing steamer. It's one of the cheapest ones I could find on Amazon, and I'm just waiting for it to come up to a boil in here. The steam will shoot out the top, and if you just run the steam across the top of your soap very slowly, it'll gloss it up, and of course it's gonna be wet, but when it dries, it keeps that wet, glossy sheen. It just kind of kicks it up a little, adds a little gloss to it, since this is a very simple top. Um, but yeah, that color morph <laughs> on that yellow was quite wild. It was bright orange, and now it's back to yellow. So I'm anxious to see what those swirls look like on the inside. But right now, we've got to steam it and then walk away till it gets dry to the touch. We're back and here it is a little while later and see how it just keeps that glossy look I think it just adds a little something to a, a more simple soap like this so now we've got to get it out of the mold and see how those swirls came out on the inside the lovely Olga and we're gonna cut into our first loaf but you can see the color morph is still going on and whoop, let me turn this over there on the corner so as this oxidizes that morph will start uh, mellowing out like the top did so the orange is still fading as the saponification process is still going on because this is only 24 hours later after about 48 to 72 hours it'll all be done doing its thing <laughs> But for now, here's where we're at. All right, so let's see what those swirls are looking like on the inside. Very subtle. This is gonna be interesting to watch as it continues to do its thing because again this fragrance did have a little vanillin so that ivory color is going to beige up and the orange color there is going to mellow to a lighter yellow so it's super swirly now this fragrance behaves like a dream i had plenty of time in fact i could have waited a little while poured it when it was a bit thicker for some more um that would have had the swirls be a little more you know stand out better and not be quite so muddied up but I think it actually looks beautiful. And this smells really delightful. If you are a lemon fan, if you like lemon squares, lemon poppy seed, lemon anything, this fragrance smells wonderful. And again, it behaves really well, so you could do some fun stuff with this. I kind of love the subtlety because I didn't do a super fancy top either. I think it just looks scrumptious, to be honest. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's get into our next loaf here. Oh, these are so fun and lovely, lemony and lovely. Um, let's talk about the saponification process. Uh, I have talked about this in other videos, but it's always worth mentioning as a soap maker. Saponification is the chemical reaction of the lye and the oils combining together to create soap. It's that chemical process and that is finished in about 48 to 72 hours. So your soap is fully saponified and down to a good soapy pH, skin safe pH after I'll call 72 hours um, if you have the proper lye ratio. If you've used your soap calculator and you know you're using a good 
proper lye amount. It'll all be done with its chemical process, but that's not the cure. So saponification and cure time are two different things. And what I like to recommend to people who aren't sure how long to cure your soap, I just say four to six weeks. It's a quick, easy answer. It's kind of the um, standard in most soap makers' lives. They make a soap and they put it away for a month and you know you're not gonna use it for several weeks. But if you really wanna get specific and find out exactly when your soap is cured, what you can do is pick a bar. It has to be the same bar. <laughs> so find one bar that you wanna use as your little you know, test thing, weigh it, I'll weigh these today, and then every couple of days come back and weigh that bar of soap. It has to be the same one, because even things as subtle as if it has more swoops on top than the other, it can be a different weight, so same bar. Every couple of days weigh it, and when it quits losing weight and all the excess water has evaporated out of it and its weight becomes stable, it is fully cured. That is a cured soap, which is different than saponification. So just a word to the wise. It would make a great school experiment, too, for kids to watch it all happen. All right, last loaf here. And for some of you that don't know, if you're new to my channel and haven't been following me very long, I am a retired homeschool mother. I have four children that I homeschooled all the way through high school. Loved it. I learned as much as they did. I tell you what, <laughs> it's great. And that is how I started making soap. It was a science experiment for school to show how you take something greasy and oily and something caustic and you know dangerous like lye and you mix them together and you get this beautiful mild cleansing bar and we just i thought it was the funnest science experiment my kids thought it was kind of cool they were a little fascinated but i was absolutely addicted after the first try <laughs> so that is how i dipped my toes into soap making many years ago coming up on about 20 years ago now. I've been making soap for a while, and I tell you what, I've made every mistake you can make, uh, trial and error for me. So it's been a journey, but I've loved it. I love the creativity. I love how each bar is different. I can repeat this recipe tomorrow and try to duplicate it, and it will come out, you know, the swirls will be different. No two bars are ever the same, and I love that. Well, I thank you so much for joining me today for this yummy lemony goat milk soap. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, so you don't miss anything going on in the soap studio. I appreciate you taking the time to join me today and I hope you have a wonderful day.